Hello, my friends. i uh, just going to make a short point today, um, and it's about a kingdom, especially a divided kingdom and a solid kingdom. Um, and it's Jesus, what the Word of God says about a kingdom, that I'm referring to. And what I tell everyone, again, as I'm showing you different things maybe that you've never, never heard or never seen, or at least very rarely have heard or seen these kind of teachings, think yourself about what the Messiah's words were and how to apply it to everything in your own life, everything that you're experiencing, everybody you're listening to, everybody you've seen, everything you do day to day. The Word of God teaches us, above all other things, when you walk with it day to day, it teaches you how to live from scratch. Okay, you, you may be 50, 60, 70 years old, and you're never too old to learn the Word of God. As a matter of fact, if you're 70 years old and the Word of God has just come to you, you're but a baby as a 70-year-old. How does one go back into their mother's womb and they're already alive, says Nicodemus? Jesus tells us him, are you so dull? Because he's not talking about that, friends, as most of us can understand that parable, at least to some extent. Um, and he's speaking of after you're already alive and old and have kids of your own and everything else, when the Father calls, then you will know that you are once again a child. And I'm going to speak of Matthew 12, 25 in particular, and I'm just going to speak about kingdoms and what you see of the world, what you should expect to see of the world, and what you don't see of the world. So Jesus knew their thoughts, and Jesus, of course, was speaking to the Pharisees. And he said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and every city or household divided against itself will not stand. So what does this mean for our day-to-day -day living? And I'm going to give an example because it's one of the easiest and it's one of the biggest things that you see today in the world. And it's homosexuality. And we're seeing it coming into government. Rulers, open homosexuals. It's not closed homosexuals. For instance, all the, Catholics, the Catholic Church scandal, they were at least trying to hide it. They're not open with their homosexuality. The world who does not know the Word of God, is even worse off than the world who does know the Word of God. Because the Catholics are of the world, the same as all other 40,000 denominations. All of them are of the world, which is what I will speak of in this about the kingdoms. But at least they know the Word of God so they can feel shame by it. In society, in culture, in government, there is no shame. They do not even blush, as the Lord says. And that's the difference between a religious institution of the world and a secular institution of the world. One blushes, one does not. And we have a democracy of sorts, of what we've called it, in the United States of America, where I live, for instance. And a lot of the Western civilization runs democracies of different forms, different types. They all have constitutions and rules. And in a democracy, the people elect the rulers. So if the people elect a homosexual ruler, what does that say of the people of that country? It means they've accepted it, they've embraced it, they are it. And from the outside of the cup, one will say, well, what's the big deal? A homosexual is a homosexual. Why do you care who they sleep with? And I will say, all of what you're saying is the outside of the cup. Now let's see it, the motivations, the thoughts, to the inside of the cup as to why one is a homosexual and why one who would elect them, all of the unjust laws and rules that that society has already allowed into it will bring it to its ruin. It's building a house on a foundation that's completely crumbling. So, for instance, we go to school for you know, the first 12 years, K through, or not even the first 12 years, kindergarten through 12th grade, I mean. So there's all of this, this school, elementary, public school, 
private school, whatever it is, all the way up through high school graduation. And everybody basically goes through this in the United States. It's requirement, so to speak, unless you have a religious exemption. So we all get our schooling there, and they're not allowed unless you go to a private institution to even teach anything of the Word of God. So the vast majority of people in the country go to institutions that teach evolution. Okay, and evolution, natural selection, all of it is scientists of the world trying to explain the things of God. And they do the best they can at it, but of course they don't build their word off of, and God said, so they have no foundation. Their foundation crumbles and falls whenever the truth is known. But let's just, for instance, talk about this. So all of these secularized people, and that's the vast majority of voters in the country, they were taught evolution, they believe in science, most of them believe in evolution, so they believe in all of these things. They're taught it and they believe it. And evolution and natural selection, because I know it, I too also learn the things of the world, as we're supposed to, as children of God, we learn the things of the world. How else do you, do you know how to speak to somebody if you don't know what you're talking about? From evolution, from the natural selective process, from selective breeding, so on and so forth, evolution tells us the most important thing that happens and occurs from one generation to the next is the strongest passing their seed from one generation to the next. It keeps your survival fit as a species. That's what evolution teaches. But I'm going to tell you how a homosexual cannot even believe that. Even though they'll say, of course, they believe that. The people that vote for them will say, of course, we believe, you know, and all of that. But they don't. They're believing in hypocrisy because they don't even know the truth. They have nothing to stand on. It's the world trying to stand on something that was never true to begin with. So if one votes for a homosexual, for instance, how can one say they believe in evolution science or natural selection because you've just voted on somebody to write laws for you and your family and your children that is so selfish that they allow their sexual preference to get in the way of natural selection and evolution because they refuse not by any genetic means or medical means or an accident or anything like that. They refuse to pass on their genes to the next generation out of pure selfish desire that they cannot control their urges to be with their own sex. A male with a male, a female with a female. That's how selfish the world could call those people. And yet the world puts them in and because they don't see the motivations, they don't see the inside of the cup, all they're looking at is the outside. They see, well, they're a homosexual. Who cares? Why should I care about them? Do you trust somebody that's so selfish, they don't even believe in what they say they believe in, to write laws for your family? Hence, whenever you see something like this come into society, like we saw with ancient Rome, like we see with Sodom and Gomorrah, when you see this flourish in society, your society is already doomed to destruction. There's nothing new under the sun. Nothing will be different for Western civilization. We know that there's a, a great war and persecution and everything else because God's word tells us all about it. But even if you're of the world, you can look at the things of the world and understand that we're already destined to go to our destruction because once homosexual flourishes that means that the selfishness the love of self instead of the love of others has already deeply embedded itself within your society because people a majority of people are actually electing them into office without even thinking about the motivations as to why somebody is actually homosexual okay so that's just it's just an example now, what does this have to do with a kingdom standing or not standing? Whenever Jesus is speaking to the Pharisees, he's talking about Satan. And he's talking about himself. 
And he says, if Satan's kingdom is divided against itself, how's it going to stand? So we know that not even Satan's kingdom is divided against itself. And what is Satan's kingdom? It's pretty obvious it's the world. Because what does Jesus testify to? He is not of the world. His kingdom is not here. His kingdom is coming down from heaven. So his kingdom is not of this world. It's coming. It's not here. So whose kingdom is it? Who offers Jesus authority? Of course, Satan. Whenever Jesus is in the wilderness, Satan tempts him by offering him everything in the world. So it's Satan's. So whenever you think about a kingdom, think about the worldly churches. If there's more than one denomination of church, what does that say about all of the churches? Is the body of Christ divided? If so, would it stand? If so, it's a dead body. Because if there's more than one denomination of Christianity, it's not the Lord's. So then whose is it? So you have all of these physical churches, all of these online churches, all of these spiritual churches, all of these man churches, all over the place. On the internet, in the streets, in the basements, all over the place. And opening or out in the pews, everywhere is these churches. And every single one of them are of the world. Jesus is the good shepherd who goes out and finds the lost sheep. Within every single one of these institutions of churches that we call themselves in the world, the Father calls Jesus to go find that one or two within those institutions and bring them out of it, because he is the good shepherd. So is the body of Christ, is the church of Christ divided? No. I am the church, my friends. If you truly believe in the Word of God and you understand what I'm saying, you are the church, my friends. We are the church because we believe what the Word of God says and we stand up firm for it. That's the body of Christ, my friends. So when you see talking, all of these different people speaking of their Gospels and their doctrines and their teachings and the Lord this, the Lord that, you really have to ask yourself, is the house they're proclaiming, is it divided? And my friends, if you understand that they are the same, as the one over here is the same, as the one over there is the same, and this one came from that one, and that one came from this one, and so on and so forth, we realize that Satan's kingdom can't be divided either. So guess what they all are? They're all Satan's kingdom. In Re Revelation chapter 3, we find out about those who call themselves Jews but are not Jews. It's the same thing. Those who call themselves Christians but are not Christians. Satan's house is not divided. doesn't matter if he has a million denominations. He isn't divided. But also neither is the Lord's house divided. So whether he has a million denominations or not of the world, the one or two that are lost in those places, the Lord Jesus Christ will call them out of it, come out of her, my people. Think about a divided kingdom. My friends, think about the verse and apply it. Truly think about where it is you have been and where you want to go and believe the Word of God. God bless.